So how's it going, my comic chat army? We're here today with Tom Hutchinson, the creator of Goth Day, Critter, Princesses vs. Zombies, and Pennies for Your Soul, and so many more. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, man. How long have you been creating comics? This is now, uh, 2024 is now our 14th year of publishing. So, you know, I was working on how to make comics, what I was going to actually do, obviously, a few years prior to that. But as far as actual publishing time, it's been now 14 years. Nice. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. How long has Critter been running for? 14 years. Critter was the first book that I ever wrote. Uh, it was it was what I used to kind of learn how to write a comic book. Um, and uh, it ended up being the second book released for us 14 years ago. Penny for Your Soul came first. Uh, but that was only because that was just we had a, a faster artist on Penny for Your Soul. So he got it done first. He, his that book came out first. Uh, but, but both Critter and Penny came out in, in uh, 2010. And um, they were both big hits right off the bat. Penny for Your Soul sold out of its initial uh, 3,000 print run immediately. We went back to did another 5,000 on a second print. Um, and we were kind of off to the races at that point ever since. So 14 years later, uh, now we've, you know, after a period of, of, of having left uh, the, the retail store system, um, we've been doing Kickstarters and crowdfunding now. Uh, but now for 14 year anniversary, we are back in stores officially as of Wednesday. Um, Antarctic Press is now uh, reprinting some of our stuff. Um, both some of our new stories that we did through crowdfunding, as well as going all the way back to Critter number one uh, from 14 years ago, that actually comes out uh, in stores in two weeks. I was looking through some of your catalog, and I like the um, Iron Butterfly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Iron Butterfly is uh, she's one of the the Critter. We call it the Critter Verse uh, now, and and that was a, a, a term that was coined by. Uh, by uh, Vince Hernandez over at Aspen Comics. Um, at one point, we were down at San Diego Comic Con, and uh, they were public. Aspen at that point was publishing the Critter books, and he was talking to uh, uh, Barbara Kessel of all people. And for whatever reason, they were talking about Critter, and, and that's where the term the Critterverse came in because Vince was talking about, well, how do we expand this? What do we do with it? Like, what's what what kind of plans can we create for the Critterverse? And, uh, and that always has stuck with me. Um, and so when we finally, we, Critter's been on hiatus for a while as we've been doing other books through crowdfunding, but as we started to circle back around and I realized it was, it was sort of Critter's time for the spotlight, I really just embraced everything about the concept of the Critterverse. Um, and it could be as the Critterverse is, is kind of multiple things. It's, it's Critter's book and her story and the, the sort of the parallel dimensions where there are different versions of Critter that exist. But then the Critterverse is also just the larger sense of all of the other characters, the, uh, the, the you know, all the other bad guys, all the other good guys. Um, and I kept thinking to myself, how do we sort of really create a Critterverse uh, as we bring Critter back in? And so um, one of the things that we're going to do, and this is, we're starting with Iron Butterfly, is we're doing what's called expansion packs. And so March 29th, or sorry, February 29th of this year, uh, we're going to be launching an Iron Butterfly expansion pack. And what the expansion pack is going to be is reprinting the first appearance of that particular character, which in this case will be Critter number 19. So we're going to reprint that for people that didn't have it before. And then we're going to also add in a new eight-page story to go with it. So for those that have no idea what's going on, we got a great book for you. For those that have been here since 19 was already out, we're going to give you a little bit of new content to go with it, uh, plus new covers, of course, and so on. Um, and so Iron Butterfly is the first uh, the first sort of attempt at this. Um, and, uh, you know, if it goes over well and people like it, we have plans to do some more as we kind of roll through the regular Critter releases, which we just finished Critter 22 in January, and then 23 will be launching in April. So kind of in between those books, we'll be doing other things as we go along. Is this going to be through retailers or Kickstarter? This is everything that we do is Kickstarter. Okay. Um, and then uh, AP right now is the only publisher that we talk to about bringing our stuff sort of to market. So um, if they're interested in any of this, uh, they're 
more than welcome to you know say hey let's we want this we want this we want this we've already talked to them about another book that we do um they've they basically approved it we haven't announced it yet because we don't have a schedule for it but there is another big dog book that they're going to go ahead and reprint from the beginning um because again we we haven't been in stores now for like eight years so bringing big dog into comic book stores now is essentially like brand new to to a modern audience right and um so I'm I'm kind of excited about that. I'm I'm really interested to see the response to to Critter be coming back, to this next book coming back, and if those kind of hit and and really you know latch on. Um, I mean, it's potential they could just go ahead and start reprinting everything that we do, um, plus the new stuff. So like the book that just came out this Wednesday is part of Exciting Comics. It's their superhero anthology. So it's issue number 41, and we gave them uh, uh, one of our Critterverse books called Catnip. And Catnip was the beginning of our goth day sort of celebration. Um, but it was at that time sort of a focused um, uh, story for, for Catnip. And they put that story into Exciting Comics 41. That story has never been in the retail market before. So that is brand new for the retail market. So if anyone's asking like, well, I think I already have that. Trust me, you don't. Unless you were part of the Kickstarter, you don't have it. <laughs> so it's it's cool to put something new out. And then within that story, there are elements that lead into the Critter series, which will then uh, uh, drop in the retail stores, you know, two weeks later. So it was a really great sort of, you know, lineup of uh, let's drop this. People will know what it is. And then two weeks later, here comes Critter. They'll be like, oh, I know what that is. Let me let me get that. So that's the hope anyway. Sweet. Um, as I was looking at Critter, it said there's only two issues planned of right now, right? Well, there's two. So they're they're putting it out every two months. So right now, issue number one comes out, uh, and issue number two is available for order. Uh, and then issue number two will be out in April, and when number two comes out, you'll be ordering number three. So it'll be coming out every two months. Okay. Yeah. As is that just AP's way they do their books? Yeah, they, they do some stuff monthly, but a lot they they were doing so much stuff with all their different anthologies and all their other publishers that were bringing their books. They just had too much going on every single month, and so a lot of their stuff now has started to slide out to be every two months, just so you're not getting like twenty AP books every single month. <laughs> you know, it'll be like ten and then eight and then you know whatever it is. So just it'll just help smooth out the the quantity per month um and and that helps a publisher with all of their logistics as well because if everything's stretched out a little bit then you're not again you're not focusing on 20 books a month mm -hmm. to try and get out um and because they're they're a small publisher they, they've got a, a small group of people that are helping them do what they do so there's only so much time in the day for these guys to to be focusing on x amount of books so um, when they were like, well, we want to do this bi-monthly. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. And in fact, that kind of opens the door for us. So then we do the next book, we could actually alternate them so that every month there's a big dog book, you know, Critter and then this other one, Critter and this other one. So that's a possibility as well. But um, yeah, that's, that's just the system for now. And I think that, you know, they're open to modification. Like if they see that it's really popping and people are like, do we want this faster? You know, the books are all done because uh, they're reprinting them. So if they decide they want to suddenly switch into a monthly series, just flip the switch and we're ready to go. Sweet. So Critter's completely done. You got, what, 25 issues total? Yeah, yeah. We have 20, 21, 20, 20, we have 26 issues finished. Uh, 22 will be the next one that's already done. Um, so by the time they get around – to where we are doing new issues now, we'll already be way ahead. So that's also the other advantage of the bi-monthly is that uh, basically it'll never run out because we'll be so far ahead of them at all times that uh, we'll, they'll they'll never catch us. And eventually, you know, whatever we're doing now that's new will filter into the retail system, you know, down the line as we as we move along. But yeah, we've done we've done we did a four issue mini series. We did the zero issue origin story to start. Uh, so that was the original five. Uh, then we did four original Critterverse spinoffs. The term didn't exist, but we were doing the Critterverse way back when. We did four spinoffs, which were all one-shots for Critter characters. Um, and then we did uh, one through 20 uh, for the ongoing series. 
And then we moved over to Aspen and that's when everything stopped and Aspen was reprinting our books. Um, and then we came back out of Aspen. We did a critter number 21 a few years ago. Um, but then we started running into all of our big anniversaries, our 10 year anniversary for the company, for Critter, for Penny for Your Soul, then the 10 year anniversary for Legend of Oz, the 10 year anniversary for Ursa Minor. And so as we were running into those big dates, we kind of allowed each of those years to focus on that book. Um, and so Critter kind of got put on hiatus until all of those were done. And then I was like, okay, well, it's, it's time to bring this book back. Now is the time. We're going to do it right now. And then this will lead us into 2015 or 2025 rather, which will be our 15 year anniversary. So um, it's all, you know, it's, it, we're, we're really planned way, way out. And if you do this right, everything should sort of roll into all of the the big dates and celebrations and, you know, um, um, all the books that we do in one way or another. Where are you going to be at this year? What comic cons you attending? So, um, more than I realized, uh, we, we've just actually got invited to a couple of more. So the first appearance for us at a con, uh, I don't know what it is. What's the first one? Um, what state are you in? I'm in Michigan. So it looks like our first actual appearance at a con uh, is not going to be till May. Um, we're looking at getting into uh, Motor City Comic Con in Detroit uh, for the first time because that's just a couple hours from us. And then the following weekend is uh, C4, uh, which is up north in Michigan. So that'll be our first two. And then two weeks after that, um, or actually, I guess a week after that, yeah, uh, we go to New York for Oz Stravaganza. So that's a, a Wizard of Oz show that invites us out every year. So we'll be doing that one. So we'll actually have three in a row starting in May. And then we'll have a week off. Uh, and then we're invited to go out to Albuquerque for Duke City Comic Con that we do every year. So we'll be going west uh, for the middle of June. Uh, and then we'll roll back into July and see what the rest of it is. We've got a few uh, for the for the end of the year. Um, we'll be in Texas for the first time in forever. Big Texas Comic Con in San Antonio invited us. So we're going down there. Akron Comic Con in November, they always invite us. So we'll be doing, we, normally we only do about five shows a year, but it's probably going to be reaching about eight or nine, uh, depending on some invitations and some, just some, some date scheduling of things. Did you come down here to MegaCon? No, too far, too far. Um, we did MegaCon earlier in our career, we did a couple of MegaCons. But um, it's just it's too far to go. It's too expensive um, unless they're comping us booths because we don't come in. There's a lot of a lot of artists go down there because it's easy for them to just take an artist alley table and draw while they're there and they do fine. But for us, we got to go down and bring a booth. We got to bring a lot of books. I have to sell books at cons. Uh, it's, it's not about selling art for me. So I have to go places where people want to actually buy books and and variant covers and, and that kind of stuff and megacon just is not that place you know we were there a couple of years um it's way too heavy in the cosplay world um and those people don't buy what we make generally speaking um so it's just if they want to invite us and and comp us a booth i would make the trip i would pay it for the rest of the trip and i've told lots of promoters that like just give me a corner spot. I will take care of the travel, the hotel, whatever. But now we have we have uh, places that are coming up and saying we'll give you a hotel and a booth. Um, nice. Like just come to our come to our show and we'll we'll do this. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm 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 there. And and tell me how I can make the show better. We can do panels. We can do um, uh, portfolio reviews. Like you tell me what you need me to do while we're there. And we'll try and, you know, level up your con as best as we can. But, yeah, we're getting more and more invites all the time now. And um, I don't really know what to really point to as to why. Um, other than just, I think, because we've gotten back into the convention scene a little bit and we've appeared at a whole bunch of places, it's almost like people have figured out that we still exist after this 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 gap of time not being in stores. Because when you're not in stores – you may as well be non-existent to most people. Um, and so while we've been doing fine on crowdfunding, we built a completely new audience through crowdfunding. Um, there's still people that are like, oh, you know, it's too bad that Big Dog isn't around anymore. I'm like, yo, we've never disappeared. Like we have continued to put out books 
every single year for 14 years, including new stuff every single year. Even when we were the Aspen, we released a brand new title with them. We did a spinoff from Oz called TikTok. And uh, so even when we were with Aspen, we released new books, not just reprints. So, um, you know, it's it's weird because I have this discussion with people on podcasts all the time. It's like, I don't think social media works the way we think it works, man, because all I do is post on social media that we've never left. We're always here. And I still have people constantly at cons like, oh, you're back. I'm like, no, <laughs> you're back. But, you know, uh, and that's just the way it is. But, um, you know, I'm I'm glad that. You know, AP was was very open to to carrying our book and and putting it back in front of people's eyeballs, and uh, I, I think that can only be a good thing. And you know, the, the 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 Critter Kickstarter in January went way beyond our expectations, so that was fantastic as well. Um, you know, it just it just kind of feels like everything's moving in the right direction, and uh, and that's a great feeling to have when this business is so shaky all the time. I'm waiting for Critter Number One. This would be the first critter book I've read. <laughs> I'm waiting. I think it's just Two a weeks. couple more weeks. Two weeks, yeah. The 28th, it'll be out on stores. Yeah, we got – and so the insides are the same, uh, but there, we do do new covers for them. So existing fans, if you want to buy it, there are new covers, um, but there's no new content for new fans. It's just all new for you. So, you know, dive in and enjoy. And it's, there's, it's not going to be a heavy – uh, a heavy, uh, uh, you know, sort of commitment because it's only every two months. So, you know, should be pretty easy. And it's fairly cheap too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, five bucks is, yep. you know, that's not bad pretty, at all. Just pretty simple. A brand new story. Yep. Pretty simple. Yep. So what's the elevator pitch for Critter? Um, so Critter is this old school superhero stuff. Um, you know, when I started to try and figure out if I, could even write a comic. I didn't know how to write a comic, but I knew superheroes, right? Cause I grew up with superhero genre in comics, like with the old Adam West Batman. Like I felt like I understood the genre. So um, I was like, okay, let me figure out what comics are through superheroes. And so Critter was created for that purpose. Um, and uh, so I wanted to just make it as, as sort of, um, what's the what's the term as 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 relatable as possible right so this isn't a superhero where it's guns a blazing it's not uh it's not like the silver surfer it's it's like it's like spider-man it's like peter parker right so like when peter gets bit by the spider he doesn't become spider-man he has to figure out how to become spider-man he has to make a costume he has to keep a secret identity he has to learn what he can do he has to learn where he stands in the universe and that's Critter. So when she finds out that, um, you know, her 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 powers are basically just strength, speed, you know, enhanced abilities, right? Um, but again, she doesn't shoot lasers out of her eyes like Superman does or anything like that. So as as she's understanding that she's got these abilities, uh, she finds out that her mother was in fact a uh, a superhero with a team out in California when she was younger, um, and so. The team comes, recruits her, takes her from Michigan out to California. And when she gets out there, she realizes that being a superhero is a lot harder than it was back home. So instead of pulling kittens out of trees and tractors out of mud, now she's fighting real bad guys. Uh, she's not always winning, you know, because you, you don't want to run the Mary Sue route where she just punches everybody in the face and they fall down. Um, you know, you have to create. I just had this discussion with somebody the other day about how to make a superhero or how to make a comic book character or like work. And the 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 whole thing is you have to create a world for this character to struggle in. If your character is coming into a world where everything's easy, that's that's not a, there's no story there. So we had to create this larger world for this small town hero to sort of just get dropped in the deep end and and say, OK, go. This is this is this is what happens. And, and you know, and then we just start lining up all the dominoes that get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, to, to stand in her way. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. And, and we're finally doing with volume six. Now, this is what we're doing on, on Kickstarter with volume six. Now, we're finally sort of answering a lot of these questions that we've proposed throughout the series uh, about uh, what is the critter verse? Like, who are these who are these alternate characters? Where did they come from? How, do, how were they created? Who is this guy from the future that seems to have knowledge of her, 
you know, destiny down the line. So there's a lot of sci-fi involved. Uh, there's time travel involved. There's alternate universes. There's spandex costumes. It's very old school, like 70s and 80s design wise. Um, and because that's again, that's just the the, the aesthetic that I really like for superheroes my whole life. Um, and uh, and yeah, so we're on we're on volume six, and that's that's pretty crazy. So this will this will run us through issue 25 for the series. And uh, because of what this arc is, when we get through 25, um, we get, you know I try and dodge spoilers, but we're going to have sort of a new status quo at the end of 25 that will just you know push us into sort of the next era of what Critter is going to be because this is this whole story is planned out like a long ways. I've been, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, and so I know precisely where we're going. I know right where 25 is going to land us. I know where 26 through 30 takes us so on and so on and so on. Sweet. Is there anything you want to say before we go? Uh, no, I mean, um, that this is, if you're interested in, in, uh, in big dogging stuff, um, basically everything we do is crowdfunding now it's, it's Kickstarter. Uh, we have a little bit of stuff in stores. There are some stores that deal with us directly. So if you want your store to deal with us directly on things that AP isn't doing, they can get a hold of us. However, just send me a message on Facebook or whatever. We'll figure out a way to, to connect. We have a lot of stores that deal with us directly. Um, but it's all crowdfunding for us to, to get the new stuff out. Um, and, uh, like I said, next year is our 25 or 2025 is our 15 year anniversary. We're going to have a lot of stuff going on. Penny for your soul. will be back. Critter will have a, her final issue. Number 25. We're going to be doing our shark book called it's only an Island. If you look at it from the water, that'll be a brand new book for next year. Uh, and on and on and on. So, um, it's all crowdfunding for us to begin, but if you want to find back issues, trade paperbacks, you want ease of access, BigDogInc.com will take you right to the store. We can just ship stuff to you. Um, and then if you want to come find us at the cons, we'll be out at the cons. All right. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, of course. Thank you, man. What? You mean you haven't subscribed to Comic Chat Authority? Oh, come on. Subscribe already. What are you waiting for? It's no big deal. Like, man, don't forget to tell him to hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, that too. Just subscribe.